We have entered into the age of Aquarius in year 2012, but some people said we will be entering into the age of Aquarius by the end of this year in December, but I believe we have already entered in 2012. Anyway, so the rulers are Saturn in ancient time and um, Uranus in modern time. Prior to that, the age of Pisces, which is during the time Jesus Christ were born and um, prophesied and then resurrect to the earth and went to heaven. That's the age of Pisces. Uranus was designated the day ruler of Aquarius, while Saturn was to be its night ruler. The symbol represents Saturn is a sickle. Saturn is associated with the higher chakras and specifically the sixth chakra, guiding us to one of the highest levels on our path of spiritual evolution. Saturn is associated with time and its timeness. Saturn is best known for its fabulous ring system and it is the sixth planets from the sun and the second largest in our solar system. Facts about Saturn. Saturn is the most distant planet that can be seen with the naked eye. Saturn was known to the ancients including the Babylonians and Far Eastern observers. Saturn is the flattest planet. Its polar diameter is 90% of its equatorial diameter. It is due to its low density and fast rotation. Saturn turns on its axis once every 10 hours and 34 minutes, giving it the second shortest day of any of the solar system's planets. Saturn orbits the Sun once every 29.4 Earth years. Notice that 29 is a really popular number. So it's like 911. Saturn is described as the Sun of the Sun, the king of all planets by his queen Chaya, the shadow. The Sun is the creator of light and Chaya is indicator of darkness. Saturn now reigns as the solar system's moon king. The square or its 3D equivalent, the cube, is indeed a universal and age-old hermetic symbol. It represents the earth matter-based consciousness, the sphere, circle, or compass, conversely, representing the heavens, spirit, elevated consciousness. The black cube or square takes additional meaning. It is a symbol of Saturn, also known as Quarnos. That symbol is revealed by occultists as they associate it with the methodological golden age. Saturn and New World Order. As mentioned before, the reign of Saturn is mythologically related to the golden age. A golden race of mortal men who lived in the time of Cornos when he was reigning in heaven. And they lived like gods without sorrow of heart, remote and free from toil. Miserable age rested not on them. The fruitful earth unforced bear them fruit abundantly and without stint they dealt in ease and peace upon their lands with many good things. In occultist and theosophic circles, such an error is expected to return and is being called the New Age or the Age of Aquarius. The face, Luvus Ordo Secol meaning New World Order or New World 
uh, or New Order of the Ages, famous motto appearing on the reverse of the Great Seal of the USA. It's a reference to the fourth eclogue of Virgil, which contains a passage that reads, Now comes the final error of the Sibyl's song, Cumian Prophecy. The new world order is born, and now justice returns, Saturn's reign returns. Now, a new lineage is sent down from high heaven. Here Virgil writes, this coming golden Saturnian age will start with the birth of a child understood to be a prophet. This is an age-old eschatology theme. Saturn's returning reign is associated by occultists with the same story being told across traditions, that of an apocalypse and a new golden age. The sun is the polar opposite of Saturn, but because the core on one extreme contains the essence of its opposite, the path to Saturn is the surest path to the sun. In this way, the alchemical lead is transformed into gold. Standard Western magical symbolism ascribes lead to Saturn and gold to the sun. That's why Saturn is represented by the color of black. So, and of course, gold color is representing the sun. Because of the Fraternal Leaders, Saturn has as one of its main teachings that the world is passing into an Aquarian Uranian age, a fairly developed picture of the envisioned future emerges. The astrological sign Aquarius is traditionally ruled by Saturn with his dark and distant aspects. This Aquarius Uranian age ruled by Saturn will be one in which a spiritual elite will be increasingly powerful. The cult of Saturn is omnipresent in modern society. Once we learn to recognize its symbols, the signal to noise ratio on the subject matter is however very low, and it is difficult to find creditable references. There is a 2017 book called The Cult of the Black Cube, Saturian Grimoire, by Dr. Arthur Moritz that contains a well-referenced description and chronology of the Saturn cult. It was limited to 720 copies only, which are nowadays traded for 700 of dollars. Notice that 720 is equal to 711, which means 911. According to the publisher, the book is introduced by German's infamous Fertin UD, legendary magician and a prominent member of the Fraternitas Saturni. Black Cube. Few people have understood how the Black Cube is tied to Saturn. Reference is often made to the unexplained hexagonal storm on the planet's North Pole. As far as we can tell, that link isn't referenced in ancient texts. However, whereas the Black Cube is an old symbol of the deity, for the initiated reader, the cube or obelisk represents the spiritual dimension to which Saturn is banished, the spiritual prison to which the deity is confined. It is square or cube because it is the simplest building known to humanity. And so it represents the jail or cell which holds the fallen king. Of course, the black cube is not a literal room in which the deity is trapped. It represents a spiritual plane, a shadow universe which serves as the Saturnian deity's prison. 
the ritual act of setting up the black cube as Saturn's idol and calling the deity forth from the idol is symbolic of releasing Saturn from his prison. Interestingly, the black cube symbolism is present across methodologies, including far distant ones. Sunny is the Hindu Saturn. In several of these cultures discussed, Saturn's physical presence in this world, his idol, if you will, is said to be a black stone, cube, or obelisk. The current idol of Sunny at one of his most prominent temples continues to be the black stone even now. We might ask why the Saturnian deity would prefer a black cube or obelisk as an icon. The answer one might suspect is related to the earlier statement that the Saturnian deity is a remnant of the primordial chaos, which was cut, severed from chaos when the cosmos surged into being. The cube symbolizes the cutting in that its straight edges and angles are clearly artificial and not natural. The cube also represents the maiming and constraining of Saturn and the prison dimension to which the deity is confined. The black cube is simultaneously the prison and the throne of the dark god. So that's why Saturn also represents um, Satan. Um, and the obelisk now has dual meanings. One is Saturn, which is the dark god, which is uh, Satan. At the same time, it's a phallic symbol. New Age. Although Saturn's ring is associated with an era of um, abundance and peace, the deity itself is universally recognized including by those who worship it as the source of evil, decay, malevolence, destruction, and darkness. These like wise appear to be a kind of contradiction. How can a being be evil or the source of evil and yet be honorable? The only possible answer is that in the medieval mind, a deity or person could be malevolent and yet have a code of, of honor um, or at least some frame of reference which humans might possibly understand. Honor implies that the deity will acknowledge sacrifices and prayers um, made in its honor and that it will react accordingly. Equally, it implies that the deity may be offended if it is approached without the proper respect and humility. This apparent contradiction is further explained in another passage. While Saturn ruled, the world was a utopia, a golden age of plenty. All were equal and thrived somehow under Saturn's rule. Nevertheless, the Saturnian kingdom was not ideal, for which reason it had to be overthrown by the Olympian gods. Saturn was an aspect of chaos, and so the equality enjoyed by all was an equality of utter subjugation. An even better parallel between New World Order and the reign of Saturn is proposed in the following passage. Already, we have read much of the virtues and powers of the Black God. The Saturnian deity is not a deity of brute force, but of subtly and cunning. His revolution will not be one carried out through force of arms, but rather through the spiritual planes, as well as through the quiet corridors of power. Saturn is the god of mystery, intrigue, 
Stealth, Secrets, and Malice. A certain kingdom today could, for example, manifest as a powerful state where there are cameras in every room, watchers on every street, and where people have gladly surrendered their civil liberties and dignity in exchange for safety and security. Which means right now, we have national guards in every state. We have federal um, officers in many different uh, states to contain the riots. At the same time, we have contact tracing because of coronavirus, and these are um, made subtly. And cunningly, put this way, it does not seem so far fetched. It could equally manifest as complete and utter anarchy, with the dissolution of the civil powers and a return to tribal or feudal living. The false notions of equality and discrimination, as well as the, as well as the, uh. Abolition of individuality are, as we have already discussed in previous posts, fundamental to the envisioned new world order. The dark deity has two essential goals, which form the mandate of the Satanai cult. The first goal is to claim sovereignty, to conquer. To take back the celestial throne, and then to restore the Saturnite kingdom, ensuring in a state in which the world is again less differentiated from chaos. Under Saturn's rule, humanity would be free of fear, grief, and loss, because it would achieve true equality through its newfound freedom from individuality. And discrimination in a never-ending saturnalia. The second, more far-reaching goal is the eventual return of chaos itself. The saturnite kingdom may never return. There are no guarantees, and there are other spiritual powers that hold sovereignty, or would like to seize it. Yet the return of chaos is prophesied. And when it comes, it may be for the last time. The Saturnite accolades prepares for that day by working to increase the influence of Saturn and chaos at work in the world today. As noted above, the contemporary New Age religion is actually founded on age-old eschatological. And times legends and beliefs, chaos is opposed by other spiritual powers and demonized as a monster itself. This role is ex- exemplified in Christian legends, which prophesy a coming final battle in which chaos will return to war against creation. The cosmos is disturbed, and the earth groans with storm. Earthquakes, even eclipses, all caused by the increasing intrusions of chaos. Most of these legends predict a return of the very monsters that appeared in the earlier battles at the dawn of creation. Dragons and demons break the adamantine chains, and so too, perhaps, the Saturnite deity. Whether or not such legends should be taken literally, it illustrates that there are other powers in the cosmos besides chaos, and that these powers seek to limit and marginalize the cosmos as best they can. Saturn, as an agent or remnant of chaos within the cosmos, is opposed by the other gods, but they cannot slay him. This leads to his exile, but Saturn's godly prison is imperfect. His malefic influence remains 
perennial and erupts at times to temporary riotous freedom before it can be banished back into the black dimension symbolized by the cube. Hasegon. When the Voyager space probe started sending pictures back from Saturn and its persisting hexagonal cloud pattern around its North Pole, countless Saturnian worshippers must have been amazed at such a synchronistic, synchronistic occurrence. That is, of course, presuming the pictures are real. It is indeed likely occultists had already re realized the, the diagonal projection of a cube is a 2D hexagon. As the hexagon was already an other notorious Saturnian symbol. In other words, a 3D cube can be represented in 2D as either a square or a hexagon. Appropriately, the black cube is often shown as resting on one of its corners. Blood sacrifice. Saturn was the origin of the Western image of the Green Whipper, and as the deity identified it with harvesting, he was expected to harvest plants, animals, and humans alike. Macrobius reports that in the earliest memories of the Italic people, Saturn was worshipped with human sacrifices. Later, when this practice fell into disfavor, torches were burned in his honor as a substitute. Modern scholars, however, of the classical period argue that Macrobius is only partially correct. There is no question that human sacrifice was part of the worship of the Reaper. However, while Macrobius tries to suggest that burning torches substituted for human sacrifices, Fresnel has discussed the considerable evidence that the gladiatorial games were carried out as ritual of servants to Saturn. One of the universal aspects of the historical and modern cult of the black cube is the sacrifice of living beings, animal and human. In ancient times, the authors of the Saturnine texts wrote that black animals are to be given to Saturn, which is an indication of his sonic nature. We know also that the North African cult, which worshipped Saturn as Bar Harman, is said to have practiced human sacrifice. A immolation where the Romans practiced it through the gladiatorial games, and Microbius states that it was performed through the ritual slaughter of criminals prior to the rise of the Republic. Ancient cultures such as the Vikings and Celts are famous for their practices of animal and human sacrifice, and even the weekly Christian communion is very possibly a womanized sacrificial rite based on the Saturn cult, where wine is substituted for blood, just as it was done in funeral rites during the imperial period. On a similar note, when Tezcatlipoca was the chief deity of the Aztec Empire, human hearts were cut out and offered to him on a daily basis. This is all to show that Saturn is the Reaper and his cult requires the death or at least blood of living beings. The modern occultist's aversion to blood is a strange thing and is difficult to trace back past the early 20th century. The most likely explanation is that as the Christian West abandoned 
sacrifice in the medieval period, sacrifice was seen as a barbarian practice, only performed in the occidental colonial lands like Africa and India. Sacrifice was not seen as a white or civilized practice, since occultism, as it is practiced today, is predominantly U- Europeanized. In、um, the ancient traditions, were vivid, half-heartedly sacrifice. Which is evident in the text, had to be stripped out, and so many contemporary occultists attempt to dismiss it as symbolic. Though they oddly maintain that the gods themselves are real, this has led to systems of the occult today which claim legitimacy. Based on their knowledge of tradition, while they paradoxically abstain from the practice of blood sacrifice, this attitude of ridiculing the practice of sacrifice stems entirely from the Catholic and Protestant missionary movement, and it is unfortunate that modern occultists have maintained these cardinal. Christian ideas in their occult practices. There is no room for the respectable cardinal occultist in the Saturnine movement. If someone wishes to approach the Saturnine deity, they should be aware that this is not a bloodless cult. Saturn expects and demands blood. There is no documented account of any Eugene. Genuinely, Saturnine cult without the sacrifice of life. Saturn and Rome, the original pre-republic settlement on which Rome was built, was first called Mons Saturnus, dedicated to Saturn. Throughout the republic and empire, it represented Rome's geographical and ceremonial center. To this day. The Campidoglio is considered the geographical center of Rome, while Conos is re- relegated to being a sort of god-devouring monster in Hellenic tradition. The Roman Saturn is a much more beloved figure, although Jupiter, Mars, and Minerva. Become the major gods of the empire, the Roman state and its historians acknowledged that Saturn was the original deity of the Roman people, and in fact, they claimed that Italians themselves were descended from Saturn. The Mons Saturnus is one of the hills on which Rome was built. And the oldest temple in Rome belongs to Saturn. Saturn has his own priesthood, and the state and the state treasury was kept at his temple. The original name of the Italian settlement situated on the site of Rome was Saturn, Saturnium. Further, Saturn. Enjoyed a week-long series of revels each year, which began on December seventeen, for a deposed deity. Saturn enjoyed a very profound respect, second perhaps only to Jupiter. That last passage refers to the festival Saturnalia. Which the tradition of Christmas gifts and overindulgence in eating comes from, the Roman festival of the Saturnalia deserves some consideration. Macrobius reports that initially, the entire tenth month of the year, December, was sacred to Saturn, while the eleventh, January. Was sacred to Janus. Within the tenth month, 
the ancient Italians and the Romans who followed them celebrated the festival of Saturn for seven days from 17 to 23rd December. The Saturnalia was wild, even debauched, and orgiastic at times. During this period, all loans and taboos were overturned. Servants became masters, and masters became servants. Servants could abuse and insult their owners, and may even have taken sexual liberties with them, much as their masters would have used their slaves at a whim throughout the year. Celebrants greeted each other with the cry, Eo Saturnia, which served to remind each other that they were celebrating a religious occasion. The Saturnite prince, the princeps Saturnalicus, was appointed in place of the usual king or emperor to serve as the master of ceremonies, and his dictates were generally followed. Small, humorous gifts were given by friends and it was a time for pranks, foolishness, and otherwise normally unacceptable behavior. Exceptionally, during the Saturnalia festival, the chains or cords which normally tie to the legs of Saturn's idol were undone, symbolizing his temporary release from bondage.